Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Weekly Waypoint. This week I have some more Halo for you because after recording last week's Weekly Waypoint I thought to myself, you know what I need in my life? More bloody Halo. The first game of Halo I'm showing you today is in Halo 3, it is not SWAT, uh, but the second one is in Halo 4. Uh, but I decided to record this game because it was interesting because very early on two of my team dropped out and yet and yet, I won't give away the outcome of a match, but I thought it was interesting when you considered the score versus the amount of players. That being said, while I do have some really good moments in this match, I also have some really fucking stupid ones, uh, and in the other match as well, because uh, as with most of the time when I'm playing games like Halo, I was talking to Reese at the same time, so the game did not have my undivided attention. That being said, even if a game had my undivided attention, let's be real, there'd probably still be some really stupid moments in there. Shut up, computer fan. There we go. I found a better mic stand that dampens out the sound of a computer fan. It's my jumper. I really need to invest in a boom arm. Today I would like to spend some time talking about Marvel's Wastelanders, which is an audio drama podcast narrative thing, which I'm not going to give any spoilers about, but um, it's so fucking good. A bit like Batman Unburied, I don't know if I mentioned Batman Unburied on here a while back or if I mentioned it somewhere else, but these are audio podcast versions of, you know, things that are normally told via comic book or movies. And they are really making a name for themselves, at least in my mind, and many others I know they're popular. <laughs> I'm not gonna get all hipster about it. Um, but they're, they're making a really good name for themselves as like, showing off just like, what audio storytelling can do. Um, and how good it is. It's like the perfect middle ground between comic book and movie production because whereas comic books can be all like completely, you know, use your imagination, draw whatever you want to see, uh, movies can often be constricted in that sense by budget, uh, although let's be real, not so much these days, but by technology and stuff and by the format as well, although Disney Plus series are also switching that up but you get what I mean. And meanwhile in comes the audio format which is pretty much a blend between the two of yeah you can pretty much set it anywhere you want um, and go to as many places as you want and stuff like that um, but it still has like the acting and the sincerity and stuff like that It's uh, that you can find in like the movies uh, and the Disney Plus shows from the good actors and it's it's yeah go if you don't listen to audio content Give one of these a try and I think you'll be surprised. They also seem to be the home of like, because they're not having to take place in established universes already, they're kind of the experimental ground for like, almost what if style stuff. I won't give away uh, what the difference is in Batman Unburied, but when it comes to Marvel's Wastelanders, um, the premise is that it's set 30 years after the villains won and killed most of the superheroes, and this is the world that they have created, which, you know, that's very Brandon Sanderson, isn't it? But it fucking slaps! I've listened to all of Old Man Star-Lord, and I'm in the middle of the uh, Hawkeye series at the minute, and it's really fascinating hearing not just like how the world is different, and like learning more about the timeline of what happened, how things went wrong and how it affected the various characters in that world, but also just like what those characters are like when they're older, what regrets they have in their past about events that have unfolded which shake up the order of things that we're used to, uh, or like how their powers have changed in their old age as well, stuff like that. These Marvel Wastelanders things really do explore a side of a Marvel Universe that have never really been seen before, um, because characters, you know, especially in terms of like, aging powers, you don't see that because characters don't fucking age. I don't know if there's been a few one-off comic stories or something which are set in the future, which I would be interested to go and see, sure, but, um, You've got stuff where it's like, oh, you know, I get tired when I use this power now, or oh, as I got older, this power kind of transformed into something else. And that's all just in the background among a really fascinating story. Uh, the Hawkeye one, I wasn't sure I'd be so down on, but much like the Hawkeye Marvel series, <laughs> the Hawkeye Marvel series, shut up, Christian. Uh, yeah, I'm getting teabagged right at the right time in the video. Much like the Hawkeye uh, Disney Plus series it uh, surprised me by being really fucking good. And they are pumping these things out, by the way, these Marvel Wastelanders things. I think they are on the fourth or the fifth series. Uh, each series is a different character. And they started in 2021. And from what I can tell, there's usually like a three month gap between seasons. And the seasons are usually like 10, 10 episodes long or so. And uh, yeah, it's just, go, go listen to it. It's good stuff. The crazy thing, of course, as well, they're just free. Like, you consider 
you know, freaking like Disney Plus you have to pay for. Um, like all these services, like Marvel Unlimited, you have to pay for. Or you just buy the comics, like, <laughs> like back in the day. Um, I'm sorry if I made anyone feel old for saying that, but these these fucking narrative podcast things, you can just go listen to them on Spotify. Spotify, I'm not subscribed to it. You don't get ads in the middles of podcasts unless like the podcast bake them into them themselves. So, yeah, again, I'm not going to beat you over the head with it anymore. This is the last time I'm going to say it. Go listen to it. Meanwhile, on the comics front, I have read 10 years worth of Daredevil comics in what I'm pretty sure has been just one month. And um, I'm not going to try and sell you on Marvel Unlimited. Other comic subscription services are available. Um, But when you consider that it costs as much as subscribing to two physical issues a month for a year, uh, that's the same cost as just subscribing to Marvel Unlimited for a year. That's kind of insane how much I've read. People always talk about Xbox Game Pass as being like the best deal around. All right, to be fair, everyone says the best deal in gaming, but I feel like Marvel Unlimited might have it beat, to be perfectly honest. The sheer amount of content and the sheer amount of money it would cost to own it all physically uh, versus being able to access it via Marvel Unlimited is staggering. It must have been such a massive gamble for Marvel, but it seems like it paid off. From what I've heard, it's like 10 years old, this service, so... Uh, I guess this is just me coming to comics late, like I never read comics as a teenager and I was very slow to get into them. I almost said during my 20s, which is disgusting, I'm 27, I've never used that phrase before and I don't want to. Just kidding, ageing is a blessing, not a curse, but um, (laughs) that's what I tell myself and I'm only 27. God, I have a road ahead of me of telling myself that every day, don't I? But yeah, basically I came to comics late. I would consider the last month or two uh, of me with within the Marvel Unlimited subscription, be really coming to terms with how to read comics and understanding how to enjoy comics for the first time and I think I'm in it for life now. Like, I did this a few years ago, I was probably talking about it on the weekly waypoint at the time uh, and, you know, God knows I've prattled on long enough about it within the last few weeks of this series, um, but I think I'm more into Marvel Unlimited than I was uh, last time I used it. Last time I used it, I just used it to read mostly the Ultimate series of comics, which is easy enough because it's pretty much standalone. The, I mean, there's a few different heroes and stuff with their own lines, but they don't cross over all that often. It's pretty standard, you know, one, two, three, fair reading. I don't know what phrases I'm throwing out there, but you get what I'm saying. Whereas, uh, when you really finally like i'm not saying it takes a lot to understand it but it took a lot for me to understand it uh like how all the marvel comics tie into each other and where the good starting points actually are uh versus what the app tells you and um you know making your peace with not reading everything and uh versus like actually finding ways to read a lot and you know i think uh i'm finally at a point where you know i i get it and i'm almost at the end of daredevil volume 2 which is I think you can. I think I can safely say it's 1999 to 2011. I'm pretty sure that's it, and I think it probably gets more complicated there. But to be fair, Volume Two of Daredevil is pretty linear as well in terms of its reading order, and it's just so fucking good. It's just, hey, <laughs> how can we make Matt Murdock's life worse? The comic book volume. It's it just it keeps getting worse, <laughs> and it's fascinating to watch him react to it. I feel bad for the guy though, Jesus Christ. One of the problems with comics is because they are so like, they're almost like a soap opera uh, in that like they're very in the moment, um, month to month uh, story time releases. So if you read it back to back, it takes place over the course of years and years and years. So these new ideas uh, that can have sometimes repeating patterns um, or similarities between them, which people who were reading it at the time would have been like, wow, this reminds me of something that happened five or six years ago, but it's a bit different. For me, it's like, yeah, I read that storyline like two weeks ago and they're already back and they're already doing something similar, you know? Because of course, when it comes down to it, comic books were never made to be read uh, back to back to back to back like that. Like nobody thought there was going to be a service where you could just access them all for free. Well, not for free, but a monthly cost, you know what I mean? Um, So, (laughs) yeah. I mean, they're good to read that way, but um, it definitely shows after you read all of Volume 2 of Daredevil just how much of a constant downward spiral his life is and 
how it's almost unrealistic in a sense that any character could take that much. But yeah, I think I'm finally starting to get a little bit tired of Daredevil, so I might stop reading it when I finish Volume 2. I might give it a break. I might go and read Guardians of the Galaxy or something like that. Or maybe 4. Uh, the, the, I forget what he's called. Is it Jason Aaron? Uh, he started 4 in like 2012 and then led it into like Jane Foster 4 and stuff like that. I might give that a whirl next, I'm not sure. I'm still very slowly making my way for Amazing Spider-Man. I don't know if I've talked about this on a weekly waypoint before, forgive me if I have, but there's a website called comicbookreadingorders.com which just makes your life so much easier for comics that aren't a linear read like Volume 2 of Daredevil. Like, they don't just show you, like, every single issue, um, which you might think you want if you're not into comics, but trust me, you don't. Uh, they show you, like... Everyone that's important to the main storyline, obviously, uh, but also what's fun. But if there's like a run of comics which is just universally kind of like doesn't really advance the plot in any way and it's just a bit rubbish, a bit like, you know, an anime filler plot, you know, to kind of compare it to anime, um, they just don't include that in the reading list. Like, for instance, I'm about to get up to issue 150 of, um, of Amazing Spider-Man, which is where I pretty much got to once before on my reading. And I remember I got to like 150, 152, and I was just like, oh, I'm bored of Spider-Man now and stopped reading. I thought that was just a coincidence. From 150, they tell you not to read another issue until like 220 or something. So I'm guessing, <laughs> I'm guessing there's a reason for that. I'm guessing part of the reason I stopped reading Amazing Spider-Man is because that's just like a, a whole bunch of like 70 issues or so, which everyone's like, yeah, nothing really happens and it's just a bit rubbish. I'm really getting to a point now with how it's possible to get these streaming services uh, and like these services for Xbox Game Pass and Marvel Unlimited Comics and stuff like that where money's no longer the issue in terms of experiencing the content you want to experience it's more to do with time. I'm legitimately looking through Marvel Unlimited and just going I'm gonna fucking die before I read all the stuff I want to read in terms of like how many Wheel of Time books there are, and how many audiobooks in general I want to listen to, and how long it's been taking me, and how many episodes of classic Doctor Who there are to get through, and how many years that's going to take me if I keep at my current pace, and how many other shows I want to watch through, like Star Trek and all that. And I'm literally, I know I'm only 27, don't get me wrong, but there's gonna be new stuff coming out all the time as well that I want to experience, and I'm starting to get to this point where I'm just like, there's not enough life. There's not enough life to experience all of these stories that I want to experience. There is literally not enough time in my life to experience this. And it's starting to bum me out. Like, I've spent pretty much two years reading half of Wheel of Time. I've I've got to, like, season two of Classic Doctor Who after, like, two months, and there's, like, 24 seasons of it, you know? Like, obviously I'm not going to die in the next few years. I'm not being dumb. But also, like, with my attention span as well. I'm already looking at all of these Marvel Unlimited comics and going, but I really want to also see what DC are doing, and I also really want to go and watch Star Trek as well, and I don't want to do it alongside these things because then I won't give those things my full attention and it won't be worth the money I'm paying for Brickbox and all this, and I don't know, maybe I need to just pull my attention back and, and, and stop worrying about the greater picture of time and life and death, <laughs> but man... There's just so much content. This is part of the reason I quit Twitter for a week. I was like, you know, there's like eight hours a week I could get back to use for <laughs> these things instead of those things. I feel like if I managed to, and this would be a fucking crime to do if I had this weird arbitrary power, but if I had the power to stop people making things just so I could catch up to the things I want to see um, that have already come out and existed, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have time to see, to unpause those things before I hit like 80. Does anyone else get this? Is this a new sense of dread I've just discovered or is it a common one that like people share? I don't know. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if you also feel this dread. Hey, get a load of me failing to get up that ledge. Hilarious. I'm getting limited mortality FOMO. <laughs> Or Fodo, fear of dying out. Because that's the thing as well, right? All of this stuff is electronic. There's no guarantee even in 2040 we're going to have access to electronics. Not the way the fucking world's going at the minute. Oh, I don't know. Everyone seems to think the future's a given, but I seriously think that maybe maybe the world's going to look like a very different place in a few decades. And that's another thing that haunts my every waking step. How did we get to this point in the weekly waypoint where I'm just... <laughs> where I'm just... I won't say trauma dumping. 
Uh, that's not trauma. Future trauma dumping. What do we call that? Anxiety dumping. That's what it's called. Let's go with anxiety dumping. No, Christian, you cannot call the episode anxiety dumping. Nobody will click on it. I like how most people are out here like, I need to save enough money to buy a house and get married and have kids. And I'm like, I'm not going to get to read all the Marvel comics before I die. Actually, I do remember someone on uh, subreddit saying that if you wanted to read every single comic on Marvel Unlimited, which is pretty much every single Marvel comic before three months, uh, it would take you 15 years if you read seven issues a day. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, that little jiggle was me looking at something Reese sent me on Discord. Oh, speaking of Reese, uh, I met up with Reese the other day and some other friends, and we went and saw 4 4 or 4 4. I can't say th noises. 4 Love and Thunder. That was a movie. It was alright. Wasn't as good as 4 Ragnarok. Wasn't as bad as 4 Dark World. It was an enjoyable movie. You should go and see the movie. But I also got to meet his new kitten Luna and she's so small. She was in Reese's arms and she looked at me and she was like, oh a new human and she seemed to like me and then she sniffed me and then she was like, I don't recognize this smell and fucking hid under her shoes because I don't blame her. Last time she met new humans they took her away somewhere else. But yeah, it was a generally good time. I went outside the house. It's a scary place out there. Probably not going to do that for the rest of my week off. Don't recommend it. Actually, I should probably go and get some exercise or something. You know what? I think that's going to do it for this episode of A Weekly Waypoint. There's me bumping into someone and not noticing they're there. This wasn't a very good match of spot, really, was it? Thank you very much for watching. Please leave a like if you liked the video. You might be thinking, but Christian, the gameplay is still going. Why are you wrapping up the video while the gameplay is still going? Well, that's because I need to chill my Twitch channel now. Twitch.tv slash Critigree. I'm still streaming Assassin's Creed games and we're almost fi we've almost finished the first one <laughs> speaking of long form projects <laughs> but i might die before i finish i'm streaming every single assassin's creed game but yeah um we finished we almost finished the first one and because i've got a week off i'm probably going to be streaming a lot more this week so keep an eye out for that so thank you very much for watching and once again i will see you in the next video